I don't know who she belongs to, though. She seems like she wouldn't have survived on her own. Oh, I know her owner. You do? I sell him tea leaves from time to time. He only buys the very best. He's a particular fellow, but I expect he'd be very grateful if he would tell him to strike him. He runs a tea shop just out of town. His name is Hesco. Hello? I think I have your... Jasmine! I thought you were gone. I hope you launch and never run off in the marketplace. Tea dragons are not the sturdiest creatures. You must be the one who took care of her. My, deep, my deepest gratitude. She's beautiful. I've never heard of a tea dragon before. They're very rare and difficult to take care of, but they produce the most wondrous tea. See the leaves on her horns? We gradually harvest them to make a special brew. Jasmine. Tea dragons are used in mistrustful of strangers. They're a prized target for thieves. I'd never steal her, but I wish I had one. <laughs> Would you like to learn how to take care of a tea dragon like Jasmine? I'd love to. Then you are welcome here anytime. Dragon Preservation Society Center, here with... And I am Professor Wildridge. And today, we're taking a little bit of a break and learning a bit more about some indoor dragons. Like we have the Tea Dragon Society. They seem to have a similar interest as we do in protecting those type of dragons, which you may have gotten from the name, are Tea Dragons. And we have our own bits of tea here with us. Yes, we do indeed. It's always nice to take a, a break on some of these hot August days for a spot of tea. Oh, and definitely a good snack or two. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a bit about this uh, Tea Dragon Society. Well, these are incredible books. They're actually called graphic novels. And the reason why is it, well, it's a, na it's a novel that's graphic, <laughs> not in bloodshed or anything. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, only a little. No. <laughs> so here we have our main character, Greta, who I won't spoil too much, but she's a blacksmith. And she comes across a jasmine dragon, which is very similar to our jasmine dragon we have right here. Oh, what wonderful illustrations. Yes, they're beautiful. Before we get into this lovely video, we would like to inform you that we are not sponsored nor affiliated with uh, Oni uh, Printons, I believe. Mm -hmm. So this is all good fun and all own opinions. <laughs> so Greta ends up taking the dragon back to its owner, which is Hiskel, I believe is his name, who is the owner of uh, the tea dragon and one of the members of the tea dragon society. Very nice. So when she returns Jasmine, does he teach her anything? Well, she, he does, in fact. She, always, she, she speaks of how she wants to have a jasmine, or a jasmine dragon. Mm -hmm. So he decides that he was going to teach her. And so throughout the books and the series and such, she, he teaches her about how the leaves on the tea dragon make the most spectacular teas and how to take care of her own dragon, which she ends up taking care of, a ginseng dragon. Very nice and so cute too. They're, oh, absolutely adorable. I'm still a fan of the jasmine, of course. <laughs> So along with the graphic novels, what other items or products do they have available? Well, we don't have them at the moment, but they do sell pins as well as stickers. But what we do have is our own plushy jasmine. Very nice. Who, actually, you can get plushies of all other dragons. Uh, I believe a friend of mine actually has the caramel dragon or the, the rubius dragon, which are two absolutely adorable <laughs> dragons. And then we have the Society Card Game, 
which we're actually going to get into in a little bit. Oh, very good. It sounds most intriguing. Yes. Yeah, you have the Autumn Harvest as well as the, the normal Tea Dragon Society card game. Now, something you may notice with these dragons is not a lot of them have giant wings or terrifying scales. In fact, only a few, like Ginger, Jensen, or Grey, they only have wings. While Jasmine, Rubius, and Peppermint don't have wings. So, they're more classed as the fantasy dragon instead of the, the scary storybook dragon. Understood. And they also have these beautiful colorations, kind of like a, a jewel-toned almost versus your vibrant red and you know some of the the other colors that you see dragons in oh most definitely and they don't seem to have those piercing eyes or <laughs> sharp teeth they're actually quite adorable well it's perfect for having a, a set of a spot of tea so to speak you don't really necessarily need the dragon who's heating the cauldron at the time no actually there is a thing called a coal spirit in the Dragon Society universe. Oh, really? The one that we meet is Brick, and he is Greta's uh, coal dragon. No, coal spirit, I believe is what he's called. Very good. And he is in charge of keeping everybody safe around the furnace, since, like I said, Greta is a blacksmith. Or at least an apprentice blacksmith. Very good. Well, here we have the beginnings of the card game setup, and I thought we'd try playing and seeing how we do while we talk about other things within the, the Tea Dragon universe, as well as our own universe, with all Tea Dragons. Alright, well, very good. Well, speaking of Tea Dragons, each player gets to choose their own dragon they get to own and take care of. So, which one would you like to pick? Oh my goodness, Hibiscus is very sweet but I think I'm going to go with Peppermint this time. Oh. So I will go with Jasmine, of course. So you will take your main card, and you can place him in the middle. Then you will take the Kale cards and put those to the side, uh, face down. So here is your draw card, okay. and you will have a, uh, a disposal card. Uh, discard. A discard. So, and everybody starts with one growth token. Alrighty. Which basically acts as the currency within this game. Speaking of currency, we have our marketplace in the middle. And each marketplace uh, item costs money or growth. So, we have how much it will cost, which are these little uh, cover teas. Which, Alrighty. For instance, all would be two growth. And then at the bottom, some of these, such as the letter or the bicycle, have points, which are the teapots. And then the leaves on the cards also act as growth. So you can have token growth and card growth, which are both growth, but just in different forms. It's Alrighty. like having uh, cash or coins. And then at the top, we have our seasons. So we're in spring right now, because that's the first season. And so we, these also cost growth and such, but a uh, bigger price equals a bigger reward. And they each also have a, a purpose. So like, let's say, let's take inside day. When drawn, discard one growth token and gain two growth tokens, discard this card. All right. So that means after you purchase that one, you can put them in your, your uh, card deck. And when you um, uh, select it or draw it, you then follow the instructions at the bottom, which would be getting rid of one growth and getting two back, which technically is just getting one more. <laughs> <laughs> but after we get three of these cards, which you may see that there's only four right now, mm -hmm. once we get down, let's say I bought Inside Day and you got Big Tree and Dreams, and we're left with Adventures. We actually discard that adventures and we move on to the next season, which would be summer. And we keep going until we reach the end of winter, and that's the end of the game. All right, well, very good. Winter and other fall seasons have better prizes and better points. 
So for these we have like two points, one point. Well, down at the end of winter, you get up to sixteen points, which is oh one card. Alrighty. Well, would you like to go first? Well, which cards do I draw first? Well, you may see that you also have an action card, which mm -hmm. is kind of just helping you figure out what to do. Very good. You can do two different things. You can either draw a card and do what it says on the face of the card, or you can actually purchase a market or a seasons card. All right, well, very good. Well, as I only have one growth at the moment, I don't think I can purchase any of the cards, so I will draw a card from my deck. Ooh, this one's called General Mischief. When drawn, discard this and a growth card. Don't have a growth card yet, so we'll just discard this one. Yes. I got bored. When drawn, discard this and an entertainer. Well, I don't have an entertainer at the moment. Oh, speaking of different cards, you may notice on your dragon card that it has some words at the bottom. Mine says, whenever you draw a Grumen, while you hold no Grumen, draw again. Okay, well mine says, whenever you draw an entertaining, while you hold no entertaining, draw again. Yes, even though that seems pretty self-explanatory, I'll go ahead and explain what it means. So, it is... If I draw a Grumen, and I have no other cards of that type in my hand, which is my, also known as my hold, mm -hmm. then I can draw again, which means I get to basically draw two cards. But if I draw a Grumen, and I already have a Grumen, I cannot draw again, and that's where my taunt ends. Okay, well, very good. So it's kind of like a, an extra chance when you don't already have that in your hand. Yes. Very good. All right. Ooh, feeding. That looks yummy. Bowl of berries. When drawn, gain a growth token. Oh. So I will take a growth token and add to my stock here. Yes. Now, do I just discard this one? No, that is a one that you keep in your hold in. As okay. you can see, he has a growth card. Oh, very good. Oh, I got an entertain in. So this one has no... Uh, description or anything, so he will just go right here. All right. Entertaining with blocks, and it just adds to my hold, as you said. Which card did it say that you drew a second one? Oh, that you're correct. Whenever you draw an entertaining while you hold no entertaining, which I didn't have, I draw again. Ooh, general mischief. When drawn, discard this and a growth card. Now, I also have my herbs that say, when you draw a mischief card, you may discard this card and ignore the mischief card and draw again. Oh my. So, we get to draw again. And now I have my adventures card. When drawn, gain a point token and discard this card. Now, a point token is different than the growth token. Yes, and you get a one point token. You know, one point and five points, which are just easier to keep track of. So when you get five one points, you can just switch it out. All right, well, very good. Hmm. I think I'm going to take all of my growth cards and put them in the discard pile because I am purchasing a bicycle. <laughs> well, that makes sense in this society, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, no tricycle. When you buy an item, you may draw a card from your deck. Oh, so that means I could do both. It means I could purchase and draw. Alrighty, very good. What do we want to do? So I could take my sleeping, my entertainment, and my grooming, that's for two points, which would give me a total of four, and get a big tree. That sounds like fun. 
When drawn, discard this card. So we just put it in the discard, right? Yes. Now, we only have one more season, which means it's time to move on to summer. Oh, very good. So we take inside day, which is what we're doing. It is. So we'll put him over here. And we'll draw the Lake Spirit, Union, Lantern Festival, and Reunion. Oh, it's like a whole story. It is. The Lantern Festival is very pretty. Yes. The attendees now both are absolutely gorgeous. Well, I think I'm going to buy a spoon. So I'll take this growth token and put it over here. And I'll buy a spoon. Now, in the story, this spoon is very important. So I would suggest finding these books and reading the story to find out why this little spoon seems to be so important to our main character, Greta. Well, it's a very cute spoon. It almost looks like a dragon. Yes, I believe it is a dragon called around a spoon. Excellent. Well, well if you choose to draw it uh, as an action, you may discard this card to also buy a market or memory card. Very nice. And I'm sure this is a very good game for children, like it said, 10 and up, because there's a lot of memorizing. You have to remember, if you draw an entertainment, what do you do? If you draw another type of card, to keep track with it, all of the um, maintenance of your dragon. Yes. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to discard... One, two, uh, two growth groomen. So that means I just need to get rid of all the rest of the groomen. I'll put that to my, my new little discard pile. And I will get a lantern festival, which is when drawn, if you hold a groomen, gain two point tokens. That seems helpful. Yes. Oh, wait, this goes here. <laughs> Oh, and I got when you buy an item, you may draw a card from your deck, which is a sleeping. Oh, very nice. Oh, I got a sleeping, and since I have my pillows, which helps our little dragon sleep quite nicely, then I get another growth token. Now, did you know that we have dragons up for adoption at the um, the gift shop and there's one that's actually a little sleeping dragon and Aww. he looks a lot like this on his little blue pillow. Oh, how cute. <laughs> oh, well I find that very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I have 46. I am an authority. Makes sense that Professor Wildwood would win the tea game. Very good. Well, how did you feel about the Tea Dragon Society? I think this is a wonderful uh, collection of books and games and puzzles as well. Yes. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this day as well. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on our next adventure. Bye bye!